I'm going to keep a promise that I broke three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, I told you this is the end of this message, sermon series, and it wasn't, was it? I promise this is the end. Is the sound a little bit loud? It's okay, it's a little bit loud. Christy, let's go down on the sound. I'll pull it closer. Take me down just a little bit. Okay, yeah, there we go, that's good. Okay. We come to the end this morning of our series on power, preaching, persecution, and prayer. This is from The Healing of the Lame Beggar, Acts, what two chapters in Acts? Okay, three and four. So we come to the conclusion this morning. There is more, by the way, in chapter four, but this is the end of this, uh, this, is the end of this section. And so we come to the end this morning. We're going to be focusing on prayer. We started talking about it last time. And we looked, as we, as we did just a brief review, that Jesus, when he walked to this earth, he overcame, lived a sinless life, won the victory, not primarily for himself, but for you and for me. He did all that he did, and he lived all that he lived, and he died in the way that he did for you and for me. And we see the outcome of that, of his victorious living and death and resurrection in this story, which is 2,000 years old and yet should be fresh for you and for me today because you and I are disciples of Christ. And so we saw it in the power. In the healing of the lame beggar. And you and I may not know anyone in our lives that have been a beggar from birth, from, have been uh, uh, lame from birth as this man was more than 40 years. But we, have, we saw the work of God in miraculous power through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the same way that the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit healed a lame beggar 2,000 years ago, brothers and sisters, you and I today in our lives still need the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit, don't we? We face impossible situations, impossible. And I want to encourage you this morning. Some of you this morning are facing situations where you feel hopeless. Yes, yes, and you may not even want to say it. You may think there is no way this can change. I can do nothing, I've done everything I can do. It is hopeless, it is broken beyond repair, it cannot be fixed, it cannot be helped, it is impossible. And the story of the lame beggar healed by the power of the Holy Spirit shows us that nothing is impossible with God. God the Holy Spirit is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the power of the Holy Spirit is still available for your life and for my life for your situation and for my situation, for broken relationships, for broken bodies, for families that are torn apart, the power of the Holy Spirit is still available. He is here to help us. He is, in the Greek, the paraclete, the one who comes alongside to help. He is the comforter, and we think of comfort in a soft, gentle way, but that is not what the word means in Greek. In the, wor in the Greek, the word comforter means one who comes and strengthens in the inner man, strengthens. That's what comforter means. He is the same Holy Spirit. Let the Lord lift your eyes this morning and lift your faith to see and believe that God the Holy Spirit is at work and available on your behalf in your family, in your situation, in your life. We saw that and I gotta keep going a little bit faster or I will break my promise and I can't break my promise to you this morning. But this is true. We see it in the preaching of Peter and John. They could not do it on their own. The proclamation of the name of Jesus to the crowd with wonderful results. But brothers and sisters, preaching is still needed today. Not, oh, honestly, not Yes, what I do. Yes, what I do when I stand and when I preach in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I pray, pr I pray that from this pulpit, 
it's not a pulpit this morning, but you know, from here, from this pulpit, everything that is done is done in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the equipping of the Holy Spirit, and never just from my head, I know how to study and so I can do it, or I know how to play an instrument so I can do worship. It must be done in the power, in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. God gave this job to the Holy Spirit through these days. And so this, this, at this level in the preaching, it must still be in your life and my life. How are you going to preach? And preach can be with your life or with your words or both to an ungodly husband who is so opposed and just thinks you're crazy to be a Christian through the power, the preaching of the Holy Spirit, the equipping of the Holy Spirit, all of these in every area of our lives. We've seen it in his work in and through Peter and John as they face persecution. And we see that one as well in the persecution, the boldness to stand for God before the council. That was 2,000 years ago today. But brothers and sisters, you and I still face opposition today. It may not look like the council. They stood before them. But you and I live in a world that is opposed to Jesus Christ, to his values, to his ways. If you are parents and you're bringing up your children in this world, you definitely know that that's true, don't you? You see it every, generally, the values of this world, even the values, I'm sorry to say, in much of the educational system, it is the values of man in this world, not God's values. And you are going to need as you stand against these things, you are going to need the power, the help of the Holy Spirit, just as they did. And then we see it in prayer. And this is what we started looking at. And their prayer was faith-filled in full unity with God's will. And that's where the Holy Spirit really goes to work. And we're going to talk about that today. This is one of my favorite parts as we look at it and as we think about it and as we, we see how the Holy Spirit works and helps us in prayer. Because honestly, that's where we really need help, isn't it? We really need help in this area. And we're going to see this today. So we turn this morning to prayer. We continue as we look at prayer. And we remember that when Peter and John returned, uh, when they, re they got out of the, the council after being warned, don't you ever speak in the name of Jesus again, they immediately return to the gathered family. They don't run away from the family. They don't hide. They don't blame God. They don't say, Jesus, we were just working for you. How could you let this happen and get their feelings hurt against God? Oh, that's one of the, brothers and sisters, that's one of the most dangerous things that you can allow to happen to get your feelings hurt with God. It is from the flesh and from the devil. Don't let it happen. Because when you do, you, you build a wall between you and God. You build a wall. So don't run from God and don't run from the gathered family. Run to God and run to people. Some of us are very, very private, aren't we? And we don't like to share the troubles that we go through or the things that we face. May I encourage you that if you're going through a hard time, if you are struggling with something, it may be something outside of you. It may be a weakness in your own life. And that's where we are the least likely to share, right? I don't want you to know if I'm struggling with sin in some area. May I encourage you, don't cover it up and don't hide it. Go to someone that you trust. Go to someone that you know won't gossip and spread it around, but go to some people who will pray and who will give you good advice and good prayer and share with them. Share with them. You can come and talk to the post pastors. I promise you, I don't gossip these things. I, I can keep secrets. I, you wouldn't believe the things I know that I haven't told. <laughs> Come and talk to the pastors. We will pray with you. We'll pray for you. We will. We will. And we won't judge because you know what? We struggle with things too. We all do. We all do. But run to the family of God. Don't run from the family of God. So that's what they did. So they returned. Let's go to the next slide. As soon as they were freed, Peter and John did what? They returned. And they told them what the leading priests and elders had said. And then what did they start to do? They started to pray. And we see this in the next passage. Okay, I know it's a little bit long, but that's okay. While I talk, you just take a look at it again and be reminded of the prayer. This is a great prayer. And we talked about it last time in beginning. We're going to look at it again. One of the provinces of the Holy Spirit is prayer. 
one of the main provinces of the Holy Spirit is prayer. He draws us to pray. He helps us to pray. He gives us words to pray. He increases our faith to pray. He increases our power in prayer. Prayer is his specialty. It's his specialty, brothers and sisters. And if you have had problems in prayer and you will find it so difficult to, I encourage you, give the Holy Spirit room in your life in prayer and see what happens. Work with him. What's great about the Holy Spirit in prayer is he doesn't just come in and do it for you. That's and if you've been waiting for the Holy Spirit just to come in and whew, now he does it all, he does not work that way. What is his name? The paraclete. What does it mean? One who comes alongside to help. So, Flora, can I borrow you just a minute? Come up here. I scared her. She didn't, she's not ready for this one. Okay. <laughs> Let's say that Flora, I'm going to try to do this. She's small. Flora has to walk, but she's having trouble and she can't walk, okay? And so I come along, and what we think about prayer, don't be scared, I think I can do it, I'm pretty strong. I'm gonna help her. <laughs> okay, there we go, but don't, don't sit down yet, okay? okay? And we think that's what the Holy, Whew, thank you, Lord. That's why you chose her. <laughs> that's right, that's why I chose her. And we think, that's what we want, that's what we think about the Holy Spirit, right? He's gonna come in and do it for me. What I have found and what we see in the Bible is the Holy Spirit instead comes alongside and he helps as we walk. So he comes, his strength is greater, so he's carrying more than you are. His vision is perfect, so he knows more than you do. But he comes in and he helps. You have a part, but he does the greater part. Amen? Amen. Thank, Thank you, Flora. You. Okay. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, one who comes alongside. And brothers and sisters, it's never a 50-50 proposition. It's never. It's probably more like 90-10 or something, or maybe 99% and 1%, I don't know. That's how the Holy Spirit comes in. But I want to encourage you in that. But I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this, and I want you to understand something. When we look at the Bible and prayer and the Holy Spirit in prayer, sometimes we just sit just think, okay, well, I hope somebody's praying for me. The Bible makes it very clear that when we, the Holy Spirit is waiting for us to pray. Got it? And when we start praying and we ask for his help, the Holy Spirit helps us as we pray. He helps us as we pray. So he comes in, but you've got to pray. You've got to start praying. And you say, Holy Spirit, help me. And you don't always have to ask. Sometimes I ask, and at other times I just know he's helping. He's helping, and the Bible shows us that. The Bible shows us that. So we see this here, and we see this in this prayer. The Holy Spirit, this is a Holy Spirit prayer. And we look at this, and it helps us with our praying as well. So just a reminder, we looked at this last time. We have seldom, some of us, we've seldom prayed this way, this really exalted language. O oh, sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, and you spoke long ago. And remember what we talked about? Let's look at the next slide. So this, um, we'll go on to the next slide, Heidi, okay. Powerful and effective praying, theirs was, and we want ours to be as well. The first one is let the word of God fill your prayers. And I want to camp on that for just a little while and encourage you again and talk about it again. Let the word of God fill your prayers. If you feel my praying is anemic, it's weak. There's not much substance there. I feel like I'm just saying the same thing over and over and over and over again. Get into the Word of God. Really. Get into the Word of God. And let the Word of God, the Bible says, let it enrich you. It, 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 it enriches you. And let the Word of God begin to add some muscle to your prayers. You know, when it, when it comes to this, and I talked about this in the first service, when we, the Word of God filling our prayers, so often, so often in prayer, we don't pray just because we don't feel like it, right? I don't feel spiritual. I don't feel holy. I don't feel God's love. He feels so far away. I feel like I've done wrong. I feel like God is disappointed with me. All of these things that put a heavy cloud over us and that keep us from God and keep us from prayer, right? And I believe that one of the ways, not just I believe, what the Bible shows us is one of the ways we stand against this is through the Word of God because the Word of God is truth. 
And truth is what combats the lies of the enemy. But I want to talk about it in a different way from truth this morning. And I want to give you three words. And maybe we're going to have a sermon on this before too long. But I want to give you three words for just a minute as we look at this. Fact, faith, and feeling. Okay? Fact, faith, and feeling. Here are three words. Fact, faith, and feeling. And I'm sorry to say that most of us as Christians spend our time where? Feelings. I don't feel God. How many of you have ever said, I just don't feel God? All of us. I don't feel God. And we let our feelings determine our lives, right? I don't feel it, therefore it must not be. I don't feel it, and so God must be far away. I don't feel his love, and so I, th I guess God doesn't really love me. And we let the feelings run our lives. But brothers and sisters, our feelings can go up and down and in and out. Our feelings can be all over the place and have nothing to do with reality at all, right? Nothing. So where should we be instead of at the feelings? We should be where fact is. And what is fact? Fact is the word of God. Fact is the truth of God. Fact is, nothing can separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus my Lord. No, fact is, we are accepted in the beloved through the blood of Jesus Christ. Fact is, if I've confessed my sin, he's forgiven me. Doesn't care, doesn't matter what the devil says. Doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter if, I'm, if I feel dirty and unclean when I'm living for the Lord. I have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's fact. That's fact. And so the word of God, when we get into the word of God in prayer, what it starts doing is it builds a foundation in our lives. Does that make sense? It builds a foundation in our lives and it starts building a foundation in prayer. So here's the fact of the word of God. And then faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God, the word of God. And so I get the word of God into my life. What does the word of God do? It starts building my faith. So faith is that middle word. My faith starts growing. My faith starts building. I start, as Brother Roy and, and Kay know, you start looking at what the Word of God says about, I will be with you. I'm not going to forsake you. I will bring healing. I know the number of your days. All of these things. And faith starts rising. And then as faith starts rising, what does faith do? Faith takes care of feeling. And the feelings will change. Sometimes, sometimes they don't, but usually when you go in that direction instead of this direction, your feelings will follow faith, which follows fact. Amen? When I got up this morning, to tell you the truth, I had jet lag still, and I had a really sad thing that happened this week, and it, it's been a, a kind of a tough week, and I was just getting back. But as I walked through the village this morning, really early, because I have jet lag, um, I was walking through the village, and you know what I did? I looked up at the sky, and the sky was not very beautiful this morning, right? It was kind of gray. Maybe rain is coming. You know what I started doing? This is the, I said it out loud. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And as I walked through the village, they must have thought, that foreigner is crazy. <laughs> I just, they thought, she's talking to herself. And I, but I was, I was talking to myself. It's true. And I was reminding myself of the facts of the facts. And then my faith started getting growing and faith started getting stronger and then my feelings changed. And as I got in the car, came was like, praise the Lord, thank you, I'm so glad to be back. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord just brought joy. And I'm not trying to make light of that because sometimes it's a harder thing, it's a struggle, we go through various things. But brothers and sisters, I promise you, I promise you, this is the way it works. This is the way it works. And we see that with the disciples. So start with facts, start with facts. Get into the Word of God. And then let that start changing your life. Start changing your life. And if you look at the Word of God and you think it's really overwhelming and I don't know where to stop, I want to encourage you to do something. Get a Bible or get a... They've got all sorts of Bibles or all sorts of guides that give you verses of the Bible uh, uh, that are, are put together, references that are, for example, when you're feeling lonely. You know those things? What are they called? like a concordance or something like that. When you're feeling lonely, here are these verses. When you need to be encouraged of God's love, here are these verses. When you are discouraged, here are these verses. Get them and start reading them and start praying. Seriously, I, I really, I mean that. And watch your faith grow 
and your feelings change. Amen? Amen. And that's what we see here. So let the word of God fill your prayers. Secondly, what did they do and what should we be doing? What makes for powerful and effective praying? They prayed in unity and harmony. That is what the Holy Spirit does. When He is at work in our lives and in our hearts, He brings harmony and unity with one another and with God. How many of you know you start praying and you're really praying the Holy Spirit's working? How often has the Holy Spirit sort of stopped you in prayer and whispered to you, you shouldn't have said that the way that you did to that person. Ouch. You know it, right? But the Holy Spirit stops you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit works towards harmony and unity in the body of Christ and with God. And with God. When there's division and disharmony, I can tell you right now, if you are at war with, a, with another believer, you cannot have peace with God. Got it? When you're at war with someone or in strife or disagreement, you cannot have peace with God. That's what he says. Make it right. That's what the Holy Spirit does. So they're praying in unity and harmony. And when we're praying in unity and harmony, oh, God can do great things. And then third, what do we see? They pray and they see their circumstances in the light of God's word. And remember, that was the last phrase of the prayer. They pray and they say, all of these enemies, but they said, all of this, oh God, was determined beforehand. And they recognize that God is in control. So they start with, oh sovereign Lord. That's how the prayer begins. Remember, oh sovereign Lord? And what does that mean? A despot, one who has absolute control. How does their prayer end? You determined beforehand. And when you and I face impossible situations, when the enemy truly is at work against us, that's when you need to know Sovereign Lord who's in control. That's when you need to know, Oh God, nothing touches me except it came through you first. You are still here. You have not let go. Does it mean that God did it? No. The Bible's very clear. God does not bring evil into our lives. He does not. He does not. But he's, oh, sovereign Lord. Do you think God can use the bad things that the enemy started throwing at you? Of course he can. He's God. He's, oh, sovereign Lord. He's sovereign Lord, and he can. And that's when our faith starts. Our, when we know that fact... Our faith starts to grow. God, you're still with me. God, you haven't left me. And then our feelings start changing from fear and doubt and discouragement. And our feelings come along as well. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so this is what we see. Now, up to now, the disciples have not asked God for anything. And that makes me go, ouch, just a little bit. Because often I run to God and for, oh God, I... This, 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 then this, with my prayer, with my request list, right? And that's natural. But they're getting ready to ask God for something. Now, before we look at the next, don't turn yet, Heidi, but um, she's getting ready to. She's ready. No, that's right. She's ready. That's okay. What do you think they're going to ask for? Lord, smite our enemies. How many of us want that sometimes? God, get our enemies. God, show them they're wrong and we're right. God, bring justice. Make them sorry they did that to us. These are things that we would want to pray for, right? Sure we would. Let's see what they pray for. Because remember, this is a Holy Spirit prayer. Okay, Heidi, now show us. Ah, Acts 4.29. Oh boy, here we go. And now, O oh Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Let's look at this just a minute. Wow. Look at what they pray for. The first thing they pray for is boldness in preaching. Wait a minute. Boldness in preaching is exactly what caused them problems the day before, right? But when our prayers are Holy Spirit fueled, then we don't pray in fear. And we don't pray in, but what, will, what if, what if, when the Holy Spirit fills our prayers, we pray the perfect will of God. This was God's will. And see, that's what I love. 
I don't always know what to pray or how to pray. But when the Holy Spirit helps me, then I know I can pray and it's God helping me pray. And when I'm praying what God wants me to pray, the Holy Spirit praying through me, God's going to hear that prayer and answer that prayer because it's God's prayer for me. It's God's desire for me and for you too, for you too as well. So this is what they pray for. And look at this, the name of your holy servant Jesus, and they say, oh Lord, and we are your servants too. Isn't that a wonderful fellowship? Just as the Lord Jesus was a servant of God, you and I are servants as well. Give us great boldness, stretch out your hand with healing power, miraculous signs and wonders done through who? Done through them? Do they get glory? No. Jesus. Remember from the very beginning we said this is one of the themes, isn't it? The name of Jesus. That was one of the themes of this, of this uh, uh, sto story. I don't want to say story because that makes it sound like it's not real. Of this, uh, what word do I want? Account. Thank you. Of this account. That's one of the themes. The name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the name of Jesus Christ. Done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Now, how is God going to answer? Let's see what happens next. Verse 31. After this prayer, the meeting place shook. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They preached the word of God with boldness. So what do we see here? This is how God answers. Look with me. If you're getting a little bit sleepy, just shake yourself up a little bit, okay? What do we see first? The meeting place shook. So what is that? That's a manifestation. Is it God? It is God's work. It is not God himself. It is a manifestation. Okay, let's see the first one. Okay, so the first one, an external manifestation of God's power. It does not scare them, and they understand it's God. Okay, now how do they understand that? Because the Holy Spirit's at work. They, they don't think it's an earthquake. No, they know it's God. Okay. It's an external manifestation of God's power, presence, and approval. But I want you to see something before we go any, any further. Do they pray for a manifestation? Yes or no? No. And here's where, Christians, we sometimes get into trouble. We tend to look at manifestations, don't we? And we say, oh God, show this, yeah? Show that. May I encourage you don't worry about manifestations. That's what God does. That's His work. That's His job to do it or not as He wishes and as He wills. What your work and my work to do is to look to God and then let Him do what He will. Don't get caught up in manifestations. Manifestations are the overflow or the extra, if you will. God does so much more than manifestation. God is so much bigger than manifestations. They can be exciting, and this was exciting, but that's not where the focus was. But he shows, I'm with you. Have you ever been in a, a prayer meeting or a service where there was an external manifestation? Some of you may have been. Some of you perhaps not. God sometimes does it. It's not very common, honestly. It's not very common, but sometimes he does. And he does different things at different times. So we don't look for manifestation. And we don't say, if it does this, it's God. Because God does what he wants to do, right? He does what he wants to do. You just look for God. You look for God and let him do what he wants to do. Don't get hung up on manifestations. But this is one of the ways that God showed, I'm with you, my power, presence, and approval. Secondly, what happens? They're all filled with the Holy Spirit. Whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Were they not on the day of Pentecost, already filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes or no? Yes. 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 Was it a real experience? Yes. yes. So what is happening now? I don't want to go into a lot of details because we don't have time and I have to keep my promise to you this morning. I will keep my promise to you this morning. But what I want us to see <clears throat> is this. The experience that they had was real and it was God. And the experiences with the Holy Spirit and with God of our past are real and true. And they, they help us. These experiences, they help us and they remind us, this is, this is God and this is what he does. But the provision of the past, the filling of the Holy Spirit, the empowering of the Holy Spirit, the help of the Holy Spirit, the provision of past experiences is not enough for present needs. Let me say it again. The provision of yesterday 
is not enough for today. You need God's provision today for today's needs. Tomorrow when you get up and you go to work, you are going to need God's provision, God's grace tomorrow for what you face. And you say, are you sure? I'm absolutely sure. You say, how can you say that? Easily. I can go all the way back to the book of Exodus. And when God gave manna, he gave it what? Every day, every day, every day, because they needed it every day. That is how God does it. Do not live on yesterday's experiences. Do not depend on yesterday's provision. You need the fresh work of God. I need the fresh work of God in my life. And, and every day, every day, and so do you. And so they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Why did they have to have the filling of the Holy Spirit? Why, does, why is this included again here? Because they had just asked for some big things from God. They had just asked God, help but give us boldness. God, stretch forth your hand in healing power. God, signs, wonders, and miracles. How are these things going to be done? They can't do it. It has to be done through the power and the equipping of the Holy Spirit. And your life and my life as Christians, brothers and sisters, listen, our lives are supernatural lives. And I'm not talking, woo, I don't mean, you know, you, I don't mean that. I mean supernatural lives. We have life from God in this material world that is fading and that will one day end. But we live forever. And the work that God does, does in us and the power that he wants to flow through us is eternal and it's supernatural. It is, and by that I mean beyond the natural. And you need beyond the natural power from the Holy Spirit to do what he's called you to do. To live as he's called you to live. To forgive when he calls you to forgive. To love when you don't want to love. To be humble when everything in you rises up in pride. Brothers and sisters, it takes the work of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, I need the Holy Spirit's help just to say, I'm sorry, forgive me. That's a tough one for me. And you need it too. And we need it in every area of our lives. And so they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And then what do they do? Then... They preach the word of God with boldness. God begins to answer their prayer. But they asked for more than boldness, didn't they? Did they ask for more than boldness? Yes, they did. So let's see what happens next. Let's look at the next one. How does God answer? Let's move a little bit further. He's at, they've asked for boldness in preaching, healing power, signs and wonders, not for their own glory, but to honor God and for God's work to be done. How does he answer? Let's see the last. Let's go on. Just a few more verses from here. In Acts 4, same chapter, they testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So there's another part, the boldness. God begins to answer them with boldness. They're going to need it. And you're going to need it. And I'm going to need it. What happens next? Acts 5, 12 through 16. And I've just included part of it. What happens? The apostles were performing what? You tell me. What does it say? Miraculous signs and wonders. Was that what they asked for? No. Yes. Was that what they did? Yes. Who gave them the power and whose work was it? The Holy Spirit. Go a little bit further. More and more people believe. Go a little bit further. Sick people. Oh my goodness. Brought out into the streets so that Peter's shadow could cross. The, didn't even touch them. Now, was it Peter's shadow that brought healing to sick people? No. Unfortunately, if something like this happened today, I'm afraid there would be 10 TV shows and a multi-million dollar whatever. Would you like the shadow of someone to pass over you or whatever? The reason God did, I, you know I'm telling the truth. You know it. But the reason God was able to work was because, in this way, was because he knew the glory would go to him and not to Peter and John. What a sign and what a wonder and what a miracle. Go a little bit further. Verse 16, what happens next? Those sick and possessed by evil spirits. And what happens? They're all healed. They're all healed. And then the la all healed. And then the last one, Acts 5, 42. Every day in the temple from house to house, they continued to teach and preach this message. Is there any way to move it up? Is there? Can you? Sorry. I got it down too low. Let me tell you the rest of that verse. They continue to teach and preach this message. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. That's from Acts 5, 42. Did God answer? 
Did God answer his prayer? Yes, their prayers. Yes, God answered their prayers. We come to a close this morning, brothers and sisters, and I hope you don't, that's good enough, that's okay. That's okay. And I challenge you, go on through the book of Acts and see how God answers these prayers. There's much more than this. There's much, much more than this. But when we pray in accordance with God's will and we're united with him, just as we see here, God meets us and God answers his prayer. We come to a close this morning. Why have I spent so long on this for these 10 weeks? To teach you a really extended history lesson? No, brothers and sisters. This is because you and I are the apostles. We are the disciples. And what he did then, he wants to do now. The provision of then is the provision for today. And you and I need him. We do. We need him in every area of our lives. I don't even know some of your needs. I don't even know what you're facing in your home. I can imagine. I don't know what is at work. I don't know what is in the classroom. What I do know is you need him just as I need him. And his provision is available. Shall we close in prayer? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, every one of us this morning, God, we come to you this morning as we come to the end of this series. And Lord, we want to give you room in our lives, just as Peter and John did. Father, we don't want to look at them and just put them way up on a pedestal and say, but that could never be me. I could never be like that. I could never do that. But oh God, you love us as much as you loved Peter and John. You do. You died for us just as you died for Peter and John. You have given your Holy Spirit to us just as you did to them. And Lord, I pray, I pray, oh God, that we would not be a powerless church, that we would not be powerless Christians, that we would not be a prayerless church or prayerless individuals or compromising individuals, but Lord, that as we seek after you and as we call on you and we receive the provision that you have for us, God, that you would do in us everything that you want to do. Lord, that we will be fully available and not just available, but equipped and empowered to live for you and to do for you and to speak for you and to love for you and to forgive and all the things that we must do and we must be and we must have in this fallen, broken world with fallen, broken people just like us. Oh God, oh God, I pray. Father, I pray especially you would help us in prayers. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray you would help us to dig into your word. Father, I pray that you would help us that our prayers might be fueled and filled and founded on your word, on the facts of your word. And that as we do that, oh God, our faith will grow and we will look to you and believe and know that you are the God of the impossible in our lives. And then all our weak and wimpy feelings and, our, and fears and all of these things that we have let control our lives will no longer control our lives. But we will be founded in the word of God, which endures forever and which is a sure harbor for our souls. Hallelujah. May we, your people, grow up in your word and in faith. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.